Hi, my name is Kara Marie Morris, and you have tuned in to the Words in Season podcast. This week, I want to welcome you as we are celebrating the Easter season, as we are going into the week and the weeks before Jesus went to the cross, when he was buried, when he died, when he went to hell, when he was resurrected, and as he came back again. This is the time and a special time as Christians that we take time to reflect and to think and to remember the sacrifice and the suffering, the passion and the love of our Savior Jesus Christ, and most importantly, his victory over death. So thank you for tuning in to the Words in Season podcast. Remember, every time Jesus has a word in season for you. So this week, I want to talk to you about the weeks and the days going before Jesus. He knew that he was going to the cross. And as a natural human being, I'm sure his body would have had natural reactions, just like our bodies have natural reactions when we're dreading something. When we know that something that's coming, that's going to be dangerous to our body, immediately, if we let it, fear can take over. But Jesus had such a trust and such a love of his Father. Even though he was in a natural body, he was able to overcome anxiety, fear, as a perfect, spotless sacrifice in my place. He took your place. He took my place. He was able to overcome those fears, that anxiety. A lot of times, you know, anxiety is debilitating. Anxiety will make you want to not go to work maybe not have a relationship anymore. Maybe anxiety will stop you from really living out your full life. But how did Jesus overcome that anxiety? Knowing he was going to suffer, knowing he was going to go to the cross, knowing it was going to be test him to the absolute limits in his natural body. How did he do it? He did it because he knew that he was able to do it because it was the Father's will. If the Father said it, then he could do it. So let's go here quickly to Luke 22. This was after the the Passover, the Last Supper. And as the, the enemy, the devil, put it in Judas's heart to be offended at Jesus and to betray him. And as usual, Luke 22, 39, As usual, Jesus went out to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. And on reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you would not fall into temptation. And he withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, and he knelt down and he prayed. What did Jesus pray? Jesus prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but your will be done. And an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed the more earnestly and he sweat and it was like drops of blood falling onto the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he went back to his disciples and he found them asleep and exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them, get up and pray that you will not fall into temptation. So even in these short passages, these short scriptures, there's so much that we can learn about the commitment of Jesus Christ to the will of the Father. Throughout the New Testament, he said, if you see me, you've seen the Father. So we know what the Father's will is for Christians today because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever because Jesus was a reflection of the Father's will. So he said, as usual, it says, as usual, Jesus went out to the Mount of Olives. That is how he communed with his father. He went to a quiet place, a secret place. And he spent time with the father. So he knew him. He knew him in his natural body. Jesus knew what it was like to commune with the father. He knew what it was like to receive direction from the father, even as a natural man. How is he able to do that? Get away from the noise, get away from the people, get away from the situation and spend time with the Father. That's how he was able to walk out the testimony that the Father had for him. 
And then he went to the closest people that, that were with him and they fell asleep. And that to me just shows, it's so reassuring to me that there are gonna be people that are gonna leave you. There are gonna be people that you thought were gonna be on your path. And it's not like they're, they're still well-meaning people, but they're not perfect. They're not God, they're not Jesus. There's gonna be people that leave you when you need them. And there's gonna be people that aren't there when you thought they would be there. But the one that was there for Jesus at that time was God, was the Father. And even the Father sent an angel to strengthen him during that time. So he was able to say, not my will, but yours. So the phrase that came to my heart when I was thinking about this was that your testimony is only a burden if you try to carry it yourself. Jesus would have never been able to carry the cross had it not been the grace of God strengthening him to be able to carry the cross as a natural man. Yes, he was all man, all God. But as a natural man in a human body, there's no way he would have been able, his body was having the natural reaction. He was so in, in, in turmoil. His body did not want to do it, that he was sweating blood. There's no way he could have carried the cross. He could have died on the cross had it not been for the grace of God. So my testimony, you know, sometimes there's things in all of our lives that you think, really? This is what's going on in my life right now? Really? This is happening to me or this is happening in my family? Really? But even Jesus had portions of his testimony that he would not have chosen himself. And it's only when I try to carry that testimony myself or when I think of it from a low level, natural perspective that it's bad news to me. When I think of his purpose and plan, when I can see the testimony that he has for my life from a heavenly perspective, from the view of the Father as I go away to the Mount of Olives, whatever that is. For me, it's my closet. Some people, it's their car. Whatever it is, when you take that time and you steal it away and you spend time with him to the Mount of Olives, that secret, quiet place, then you're able to be strengthened so you can say, not my will, God, not my will. You know, sometimes maybe it's someone at work, something in your family, maybe it's something going on in your neighborhood, but you can say, you know what, God, this is not what I had planned. This is not the purpose that I thought I was gonna be walking out, but I believe that I'm supposed to stay. Or maybe you think, I believe that I'm supposed to go. But you are able to carry that testimony, just like Jesus was able to carry the cross, knowing he was going to take on the sin of the world, knowing that he was going to be for the first time in eternity to be separated from the Father. He was gonna be separated from someone who he was one with. He was gonna be separated as he went to hell. And as he died, he went to hell and he took on the sin of the world. And he was there for three days. And as he defeated the enemy, he won the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and he rose again. But Jesus would not have been able to do it had he not had that moment in the garden with the Father. And he would have said, not my will, God but your will. So whatever testimony, whatever's going on in your life, know that the Father is with you. Every time that you say, not my will, but your will, God. Not my plan, but your plan. Not my purpose, but your purpose. Not my path, but your path. Know that he has your hand. He is with you. And just like Jesus was able to carry his cross, through unthinkable circumstances, after being beaten until you could not recognize him, he was able to do it because the Father strengthened him. His relationship with the Father strengthened him, knowing that his Father's will was more important than what he was feeling, more important than his natural outside, what he looked like. He was able to do it because of his relationship with the Father. So again, the phrase that came to my heart, my testimony is only a burden if I try to carry it. He went into Jerusalem as a triumphant king. And as he took the Passover and as he was preparing his heart and he was telling the disciples what was to come, he was preparing them to say, I'm gonna die. 
I'm going to have to go through these things. But my father is going to be with me. So he came into Jerusalem as a triumphant king. And now we know that as he's died, as he was buried, as he rose again, he will return to us as the triumphant king of kings and lord of lords. So this week, I encourage you that the word in season is your testimony is only a burden if you try to bear it alone. Release that burden to God. Release your life to God and say, God, just like Jesus could say, not my will, but yours. I want to say, not my will, but yours. And he will give you the grace, the mercy, the provision, the understanding to be able to walk every step with him. Thank you for watching the Words in Season podcast. Have a wonderful uh, Palm Sunday and God bless you. Thank you.